All right. I'll give people a couple more minutes. I just want to get you guys, let's get everybody settled, see what's going on. Hey everyone, it's Wednesday evening and we are here on Tea Time with Pam. And tonight I wanted to talk about three nighttime necessities to help make your nightly routine work even more for you. Um, a lot of times when you start getting ready and try and wind down for your evening, that is when your monkey mind starts to race and all of those to-do list and everything you've had on your mind start flooding in. Maybe something you forgot to do today, maybe something that happened to you today. Um, a million things tend to run. So it's my goal each night to take some time for me and create an atmosphere where I can have the best nightly routine to help me sleep better at night, to help me wake up focused, and just all around feel better. Um, Self-care is essential if you want to continue to grow. And that includes your nightly routine. Now last week we talked a little bit about morning routines and meditation and mindful movement. Tonight, again, I wanna talk about those three nighttime necessities that should be in your routine. Now if you've downloaded uh, my six steps to less anxiety in six days and you've started using it um, you've probably noticed that that is one big part of the nightly routine is, you know, taking, even if it's just 15 minutes for you and maybe you journal, maybe you read a book, putting that phone down and your electronics down 30 minutes before bed, and just setting yourself up. Um, that is the key to helping you get a better night's rest, waking up more motivated, ready to go. Um, so tonight on my three nighttime necessities, the first nighttime necessity I want to talk about is setting up those 15 to 20 minutes for you to unwind. And while that might not seem like a lot, it's a great start, especially if you do find yourself a little more chaotic and maybe you've got your family and kids and whatnot going on. Um, one of the big parts of my 15 minute routine is I love to journal. Um, I don't know if any of you out there journal now or have experimented with it. Um, if you do, I would love to hear from you. I'd love to know what you tried, maybe where where you've gone with it and where you're at with journaling. Um, now I see a couple people are getting on. Um, if you're out there, give me a shout. Let me know where you're joining us from. Um, again, tonight we're talking about those three nighttime necessities and the first nighttime necessity I'm going to talk about is journaling. Um, it was something I hadn't really started doing till about a year ago. <laughs> hey Sarah, thank you. Um, and for me, journaling, I always stayed away from it because I thought it was too hard. I thought you had to write about your whole day and everything you did and I'm like, who wants to read that? Who wants to do that? And where, what does it do for me? except make me rerun all those things that maybe I forgot to do today or my to-do list. And it's, again, it wires you back up. But one method of journaling that I have found to be extremely useful and that I love to help me unwind at night, it's called bullet journaling. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever heard of bullet journaling. If you have, definitely give me a wave, let me know. Um, I think it's very interesting because you bullet point everything. So you can pick certain topics, you can decide maybe what you want to focus on for the month. Um, a lot of times for me, I like to write down if, like if I know I'm teaching yoga on Monday, Wednesday, Fridays for a whole month, I like to try and put my classes in there, kind of manifest where I want to go, and where I want to draw people. Um, for others, maybe you put what one great thing to do is at night to set up, you set up your next day's routine. So in your bullet journal, you write, now it's for tomorrow, so be the uh, 20th of December is tomorrow. You'd set it up and you'd put on there, you know, morning, get up 4.30, go to the gym. That's what I do. And then I'd put meditation after that. And then I'd put work after that. And then I put life recovery yoga after that. So what it does is it helps me get my brain ready for tomorrow. It gives me stuff to look forward to. And it puts me in a positive mindset. This way I'm not trying to get up and remembering everything I have to do and then not knowing where I'm going. It just it gives you a better focus. And 
And for me, this month, my focus has been my workouts. So I actually, in my next column in my bullet journal, I list everything I do at the gym, which is very cool because now I'm seeing my growth. So I'm seeing it from a mindset perspective. I'm seeing it from a how much weight my lifting perspective. It gives you a way to reflect back. And the really fun part about bullet journaling is it's not your normal journal. Um, I have a really good time breaking out all of my fun gel pens and felt tip pens and kind of using all the colors to be able to put anything that comes to mind. So maybe I have those lists. And maybe during the day two, um, you know, maybe you see a quote or you hear something that you really like, jot it down. Um, maybe something else inspires you, jot it down. Because what happens is with your bullet journal, you've got your table of contents and you're going to list all your different pages as you build this journal. And that creates a great way for you to reflect. So as you're building all these positive aspects of your life and you're manifesting all these amazing dreams as you write them down it brings them to life by putting them on paper by writing them out by getting them out of you you are now putting them out to the universe which is huge because what you put out it comes back so i think that is an amazing way to help get you ready for the next day and help you unwind from your day by being able to reflect um, I mean, going forward, what I'd like to do is next week, and I'm going to leave it up to you guys, maybe Wednesday or Saturday of next week, I would love to do a full call on just bullet journaling, kind of maybe show you how to build one for your 2019 and set you up. So we'll talk more about that in a little bit. So again, so journaling is part of my 15, 20 minutes of just unwinding at night. So that is my biggest nighttime necessity that is brought my routine to a whole new level. Um, now, the next thing I like to do, and I found it is helping me more and more, is I like to read. And reading, while not for everybody, I find certain books, especially at night, help me to reflect on um, where I am for me. Lately, I've really gotten hooked on to um, Pima Chodron, so a lot of her books I've been buying. Um, one of my favorites that she has is... Um, is this one actually that I have here. It's called Taking the Leap. What this book has inside is her story of how to recognize habits that are keeping you, holding you back. It's how to recognize those triggers and then what to do to respond to them. So it's books like that that kind of help me look at my day and understand better and kind of see where I'm at. So I can almost use that while I'm doing my bullet journaling. It's a wonderful concept. Um, but that is my, those are two big steps for me. Now, so that all kind of winds into one of your nighttime necessities. That is your 15 minutes of you, of unwinding, of creating an environment for you to kind of come down and ground. Um, the second big thing I like to do at night is I, I like to meditate at night. I like to, again, I like to do a lot of reflection at night. I feel like it helps me clear my head and clear my space. Um, by doing that for me, it, it turns off my monkey mind and it helps me kind of come back into, into where I need to be so I can sleep peacefully and not have a hundred thoughts running through my head. Now, meditation at night is not for everyone. Um, I'm a huge advocate, advocate of it in the morning. Um, I know for some people at night it might bring on a lot of thoughts and bring on a lot of stuff. So it actually may wake you up. Um, again, for me, I have the opposite effect. So you kind of have to try your practice and see where it benefits you best. But I do like to incorporate meditation at night. Again, as one as my second nightly necessity, just because it helps me ground, it helps me turn off my brain a little bit more. And it just lets me cleanse out everything from the day. So all my chaos, all my to-do lists, all my you know traumas and dramas and everything you got rolling around and just to really just let it go put it out to the universe and just let it go because um, a lot of times if you hold on to that stuff that's what's going to keep you from sleeping well at night you're going to be stressed and overwhelmed and you know just uncomfortable so if you can kind of release it out and let it let it be i think you'll find a better a better night's sleep will come your way so again, tonight we're talking those three nightly necessities. And so far we have your 15 minutes for you. So it's your journaling, your reading, certain things you can do to unwind. 
The next big step is meditating to help ground you and balance you and renew your reflection and focus. And the third big necessity for me is setting the mood for my sleep. Um, so every night before I go to bed, about 20 minutes before, my electronics go off, they I don't stare at the screen anymore, and I set up my, my diffuser so that it starts bringing those pleasant aromas into the air, things that are gonna stimulate my brain in a way that stimulates the neurons for sleep, for rest, for relaxation. Um, for me, that means I like to use my lavender oil, my wood oils, anything that's gonna ground. Um, and what that does is it kind of goes into the air at home and it just sets up my bedroom for my, my sleeping time. <laughs> um, and it just creates an atmosphere to, to better relax and enjoy. Um, there are different um, blends and aromas and different ways to use them. Um, they'll help you to relax. They'll help you to uh, sleep a little bit better. Um, they'll help you really just de-stress and help you become less, less anxious. Um, it'll help you kind of quiet your brain and really just react to the ability that your head wants to sleep. Because sleep is a huge part of feeling better. Um, when we sleep better, your next day you're not as groggy. You're, you're more focused. You're more motivated. There's less brain fog. Um, so there are all these different ways to set yourself up for the next day. So again, tonight we're talking about those three nightly necessities. We're talking about those three setups that create your best nightly routine. So again, I like to use journaling. I like to use reading. That is my, my big 15 minutes to unwind. And then I meditate, setting me up to be relaxed and less stressed. And then I set up my environment for sleep. All of this leads up to creating my next best day. Um, so what we're gonna do is on Saturday on Coffee Talk with Pam, we're gonna take those three things and we're really gonna talk about a timeline to help you set up your night in the best way for you. We're gonna create that nightly routine. Now, if you're looking for something more and you're looking for something more unique to you, then definitely please reach out to me. Please let me know um, what's going on in your world and hopefully we can set you up with a routine that really works for you. So again, our focus here is nightly routines and nightly necessities this week. If you have any questions, please leave a hashtag in the replay, tag me in it, let me know what's going on. And if you'd like to book your free call, give me a shout out, say, hey, I'm ready, let's level up. Um, in the meantime, if you have any questions, I am here, definitely reach out to me and I hope to hear from you soon. Everyone have a great night, and I'll see you Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Bye.